Hey guys, I'm back, and in this video, I want to answer the question, is it okay to take the trace mineral strontium for osteoporosis? So let's just talk about that. Uh, this trace mineral is the most abundant trace mineral on planet Earth, and its main function is to help increase bone density. So its chemistry is very similar to calcium, uh, but this trace mineral is really good to make the outer shell of the bone very, very rigid and hard, and also to help prevent hip fractures. So here's the big issue with this trace mineral. Uh, minerals come in two forms, uh, inorganic and organic. Inorganic would be similar to like rocks in the soil. Okay, they're elements. And what happens is the plant is supposed to help absorb these elemental inorganic minerals and turn them into different bonds which are weaker. And we call those organic minerals, okay? Different definition. So organic minerals have weaker bonds that are much easier to absorb in our body and process. So when you're dealing with trace minerals, it's important not to take the elemental ones because your body can't really absorb them too well. You want a plant-based trace mineral like this one, okay? This is all plant-based, prehistoric vegetation, like 70 million years old. And so this is in the form that the body can absorb. So when you're trying to build bone, in addition to taking this, you want to take calcium and vitamin D. The type of calcium I'm going to recommend is something called calcium, aspartate, and hydrous. Okay, this is a really good type of calcium that absorbs like 98%. And then vitamin D3. Make sure you get the D3, not the D2. And I would recommend taking at least 10,000 IUs, unless you're getting regular sun through the day. When you're building bone, if you have osteopenia or osteoporosis, it does take a long time, okay? And you have to eat healthy as well. So it could take one to six years to build back your bone, but it's totally possible if you give your body the raw material. So one problem with absorbing these minerals is making sure your stomach is acidic, because if your stomach is not acidic, you're not gonna absorb these minerals no matter what. So apple cider vinegar with, with each meal is important. Um, and the, the way that you know you have an alkaline stomach is if you have heartburn or acid reflux or GERD, then we know you don't have enough acid, okay? If that's new to you, uh, watch the link down below. I'll, I'll put some information on that. So this is a very important trace mineral uh, for people with osteopenia and osteoporosis. Thanks for watching. You know, I realized I never did a video on a selenium deficiency. So here it is. Selenium is a trace mineral, which means you need very small amounts of it, but it's very, very important. One of the functions is it helps you convert T4 to T3, the active form of the thyroid hormone. So if you're deficient in selenium, you're going to have hypothyroid symptoms, which will be a whole series of things. And I'll put a link down below if you're interested. Uh, DNA synthesis. So your DNA needs selenium to be created. If you're eating foods high in selenium, let's say you're doing some Brazil nuts, tuna, shrimp, sardines or sea kelp, and you have some of these selenium deficiencies, it could be because you have intestinal absorption problems, or you had a gastric bypass, or you're older. As you reach 90 years old, you really become deficient in selenium. You just can't pull it in anymore. Also, if you're on statins, you will be deficient in selenium. Selenium makes up a lot of different proteins. And one big one is glutathione, which is like the master antioxidant. And if you're deficient in glutathione, definitely going to have some heart problems. The heart could even enlarge. Another symptom of a selenium deficiency is infertility, as well as number eight, low sperm count. Number three, myocardionecrosis. What is that? That is actually breakdown of the heart tissue. And this occurs when you also have an iodine deficiency, which, by the way, is actually quite common to have an iodine deficiency. Number four, muscle weakness. Number five, mood problems, anxiety, feeling confused. Number six, fatigue, probably because of this right here, and brain fog. Your hair needs selenium. Well, guess what? Hypothyroid, okay, that can cause hair loss as well. And then I already mentioned low sperm. So definitely don't forget about selenium, Brazil nuts, tuna, shrimp, sardines, sea kelp, other seafood, and other fish that's from the ocean.
All right, thanks for watching. I wanted to do a quick video on the benefits of chromium needed in very tiny amounts. And I'm talking about between 25 and 35 micrograms, okay? Not milligrams, but micrograms. That is a very, very tiny amount. Now, there are foods that have a bit more chromium. Uh, that would be broccoli, nutritional yeast, turkey, beef, green beans, lettuce, peanut butter, and there's quite a few more. If you're going to take chromium in a supplement, I would recommend taking the chromium picolinate. It's one of the best forms. But let me just tell you the benefits of chromium. The biggest benefit is going to be for your blood sugars because chromium supports insulin resistance. It makes insulin more sensitive, and so it's going to reduce insulin. And anytime you reduce insulin, you're going to do a lot of good for your body. That's why it's good for endothelial function, which is the inside of your arteries. It's good for your lipid profile because you're lowering insulin. And it also lowers oxidative stress simply because high amounts of sugar is like taking steel wool to the inside of your arteries. Now, because it decreases insulin, it's going to be good for your weight and some associated benefits too, like your appetite is going to be a lot less. So if you are a binge eater, start taking chromium. Chromium specifically helps people that have to binge. Now, because it addresses insulin, it's going to help you with cravings, okay, especially sugar cravings. And uh, it's also going to actually improve your cholesterol profile simply because you're lowering insulin and improving your blood sugars. And the other associated problem with high amounts of insulin is PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. So you can directly improve that condition. So if you have PCOS, I would highly recommend taking chromium. There are some other really good things you can take for PCOS as well, as a side note. One would be inositol. The other one would be potassium and B1. All right, that was your short video. Thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to The Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. 
That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.